So, you think you're rich. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're not even close. In their world, the world's richest people buy things that make your most expensive purchase look like pocket change. What do these insanely rich people do with their money? They buy expensive things, of course. In this video, we'll be looking at the most outrageously expensive things billionaires have bought. From luxury cars and mansions to private islands and priceless art collections, these super rich folks have spared no expense in ensuring their lives are as luxurious as possible. So if you're feeling a bit down about your bank balance, don't worry. You can always console yourself with the knowledge that someone has spent a million times more than you. Ready to take a look at some of the most ridiculously expensive things billionaires own? Giant clock. Yeah, you heard that correctly, a giant clock. All the horror movies with giant clocks would make me think twice, but no, not this billionaire. In 2018, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos was constructing a large 10,000-year clock within a West Texas mountain. When it's completed, the clock would be 152 meters high and operated by the Earth's heat cycles. I know what you're thinking, maybe when it's midnight, it shows the future. Who knows? Well, yes, it does show the future. The clock was inspired by Danny Hillis in 1995, who envisioned a 10,000-year clock to look at humankind's and the Earth's future. That concept emerged into the clock of the Long Now, and the project is run by the Long Now Foundation. Hillis went on to co-found it to build a practical version of his envisioned clock. So what will this timepiece do? Honestly, not much. This $42 million supersized clock is on our list because of its price tag, even though it's not hanging in Jeff Bezos' living room. The clock was designed to run for 10,000 years. The clock is programmed to tick once a year and chime once every millennium. That appears to be a lot of work for such a small amount of activity, yet the clock serves an important role. I know what you're thinking. Why would somebody build a clock in a mountain and hope it will chime for 10,000 years? What kind of millennial questions and tasks will a ticking clock for 10,000 years pose? If this clock can last 10 millennia, let's ensure our society can too. A royal haircut. How much does your barber charge for a haircut? If he's the personal barber of royalty, paying more than half your annual salary for a haircut would be normal. The Sultan of Brunei, Haji Hassan Obokia, had a 15,000 pound or $25,358 haircut in 2009. He paid $18,621 for a luxurious cabin to fly his barber in during a period when swine flu was prevalent. This is intended to keep his barber from mixing with other passengers. The entire cost of one single haircut was $43,979. Mark Zuckerberg and his $30 million Hawaiian estate. If you have a few billion dollars to spare, you might buy yourself a nice piece of property, right? That's what Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg thought when he plunked down $30 million for a 700-acre estate in Kauai, Hawaii. Besides the property's beach, Zuckerberg's new digs include a golf course, a huge swimming pool, and some very opulent amenities. The place is so lovely that Zuckerberg has decided to name it the Sanctuary. We're not sure what he plans to do with it. Maybe he'll retire there. But one thing's for sure, it's not cheap to be a millionaire. The Flying Palace of Prince Awalid bin Talal reportedly cost a minimum of $500 million. If the movie Aladdin taught me anything, expect the unthinkable from Arabian royalty. In the early 2000s, Prince Al-Walid bin Talal already had a $220 million Boeing 747-400. Still, then in his world, that's nothing out of the ordinary. So he turned it up a notch. In 2007, he spent $319 million on the world's largest passenger jet, an A380 double-decker super jumbo aircraft. He authorized different upgrades, including room for his horses and several Rolls-Royce automobiles, pushing the price beyond $500 million. However, before it was completed, he sold it to an unnamed buyer. I wonder how much he'd sell a beast like that for. Warren Buffett in his $80,000 watch When it comes to luxury items, billionaires know how to party. Take Warren Buffett, for example. This business magnate has an estimated net worth of $72.7 billion, and he's not afraid to show it off especially when it comes to watches. Buffett's most expensive watch is an 18-karat gold Patek Philippe that he purchased for a whopping $80,000. But that's nothing compared to Dubai-based billionaire Nasir al-Rashid, who once spent $11 million on a watch. Yes, you heard that right, $11 million. And if you're ever feeling down about your bank balance, remember that some folks are spending millions of dollars on watches, cars, and yachts. It shows that money can't buy happiness, but it can surely buy a nice watch. Gold is the new black. 
We all love gold, but not as much as these billionaires who could not only afford luxury, but have them in gold. Hurgi bin Abdallah, a Saudi billionaire worth roughly $28 billion, regularly brags about his collection of gold automobiles on Instagram. He has a Rolls Royce, a Mercedes, and a Bentley, and not one, but two Lamborghini. What's his dirty little secret? The collection is made of gold vinyl rather than actual gold. Let's not forget Kanye West, who had a gold-plated toilet seat. You can fritter away $750,000 on gold-plated toilet bowls if you're a billionaire like Kanye West. We all know how much bling he likes, but we didn't think he'd need it in his toilet. The toilets didn't merely appear at their estate, it was a huge show that included a 49-foot-tall solid gold box containing the facilities. You're shocked about a gold toilet? How about teas? This next billionaire will shock you. You might be able to afford a nice car or a McMansion, but you might need more money to spend your money on a pure gold t-shirt. That's right, Data Puge, an Indian billionaire, was inducted into the Guinness Book of Records in 2013 for owning the most expensive t-shirt recorded. The entire t-shirt was made of pure gold and had a button made of 22 karat gold. It also weighed 9 pounds, 4 kilograms, equivalent to about 30 t-shirts. The t-shirt cost a whopping sum of $213,000. However, in 2016, he was mugged by people claiming to be good friends of his family, and while they were stealing all of his jewelry, Data Puge was killed. His record remains to this day. Let's just say his glory walked hand in hand with his doom. R.I.P. Data G. Steve Cohen's Pickled Shark Cohen took owning an aquarium to another level by acquiring a 14-foot preserved shark which is worth between $8 million and $12 million. Plenty of wealthy people have beautiful fish tanks, but that pales compared to owning your own preserved shark. In 2004, renowned hedge fund owner Steve Cohen purchased the world's most unusual piece of contemporary art, a 14-foot tiger shark pickled in a mixture of alcohol and formaldehyde. Initially bought for $93,000 by art mogul Charles Sachi in 1992, Cohen acquired the piece, officially titled The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, for an undisclosed sum more than 10 years later, which New York Magazine revealed to be somewhere around $8 million and $12 million. Bill Gates and his $40 million yacht How would you like to own a $40 million yacht? No? What if I told you that Bill Gates has one? That's right, the Microsoft founder and one of the wealthiest people on the planet doesn't just have a few cars and houses. He also has a $40 million yacht that he bought in 2014. Named Aquarius, the yacht has a high speed of 30 knots and can accommodate up to 12 guests and 14 crew members. It also has a jacuzzi, a gym, and a movie theater. Speaking of yachts, Jeff Bezos owns a gigantic ship that had to dismantle a significant historical bridge to cross. So Bezos is ready to dismantle and rebuild just so his baby can pass through. If that's not outrageous, I don't know what is. So if you ever felt sad about your net worth, remember you can always console yourself with the thought of owning something even Bill Gates doesn't have. A $2 teapot? Larry Ellison and his $200 million private island. You might as well be a broke peasant compared to a man who owns a private island. Take Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle and the fifth richest person on the planet, who bought himself a $200 million private island. That's right, a $200 million island. It is so huge that it even has its own airport. It's so exclusive that you need an invitation from Ellison himself to visit. Unless you're a billionaire, it's your circle so you can waltz on in. What does Ellison do with this incredibly luxurious piece of real estate? He uses it as a giant playground for his many luxury cars, helicopters, and jets. So the next time you can't help complain about your $5 latte, remember that people are spending millions of dollars on things that don't even have a use. Mukesh Ambani's house is worth $2 billion. Ambani inherited and runs an oil empire, which has given him a net worth of over $43 billion. The Indian entrepreneur used $1 billion of his riches to construct the most costly residence in India and the entire world. Forbes describes Ambani's house as a 27-story, 400,000-square-foot tower with three helipads and six underground parking spaces. The hotel, named after the fable island of Antilla, is said to have a ballroom, a 50-seat theater, and nine elevators all in the foyer. Ambani's mega mansion requires the services of approximately 600 people. Um, why well, call this a house then? Who lives in a skyscraper? This is a freaking company. Michael Bloomberg and his $45 million New York City penthouse. 
You know what they say, with great wealth comes great responsibility. And for some billionaires, that responsibility comes in the form of some costly things. For example, did you know Michael Bloomberg owns a $45 million penthouse in New York City? Now, I don't know about you, but if I had a spare $45 million laying around, I sure as hell wouldn't waste it on a penthouse. I'd buy like five islands or something. But that's just me. For billionaires, money is no object, which is why they can afford to drop tens of millions of dollars on a single home. How do they sleep at night, knowing they could have bought a small company with the same amount of money? Carlos Slim's $800 million museum. Art collectors are classified into two types, those that own art collections and those that own museums. Carlos Slim, Mexican's richest man, is worth $71.4 billion. In 2001, he was the world's wealthiest man. According to NPR, that is the year he opened the metallic six-story Museo Samaya, an $800 million behemoth with no windows. This art museum held the greatest collections of art, and yes, and yes, he displayed his outstanding own 65,000 artistic masterpieces including some of Europe's and Mexico's most valuable artworks. Bill Gates pays $30.8 million for Leonardo da Vinci's scientific scribbles. Bill Gates and Leonardo da Vinci share many similarities. They are math gurus who changed the course of history. It's only natural that the founder of Microsoft would be interested in the ideas of the original Renaissance man. Gates paid $30.8 million in 1994 for the Codex Lester, a 72-page book created by Leonardo da Vinci in the early 16th century. Replete with the legendary polymath schematics, thoughts, sketches, and futuristic ideas and inventions, 